The first problem right here is one of the harder ones on the page. It says, Jalen constructs the circumscribed circle of the triangle shown. Select the line type Jalen uses to construct the circle and drag point X to the center of the circumscribed circle. Okay, what a circumscribed circle is, is where you're gonna draw a circle that hits all the points of the triangle. So, for example, I'm gonna try to draw this as perfect as I can. Draw yours as well. A circle that hits all these points. Okay, I tried. That's pretty close though. <laughs> Okay, um, it says select the line type Jalen uses to construct the circle and then drag point X to the location of the center of the circumscribed circle. So just based on what I drew, the center, just eyeballing it would be right here. And there's this little point with an X there, you would drag and drop that right there in the center. So we got that part right. But, um, it wants to know which of these lines, whether it be altitudes of the triangle, angle bisectors, medians, or perpendicular bisectors would intersect at that point. What you could do is like draw these and see what intersects at that point. For example, you could draw like an altitude here and an altitude here and an altitude here, but you can see that those don't intersect at that point. So you could go through each type of line and see which intersects there and that would work. Um, the other thing that we can just review quickly, we're going to flip this over. Um, the perpendicular bisectors intersect at the circumcenter. <coughs> I'm, I'm yeah, zooming out there. The altitudes, altitudes intersect at the orthocenter, they should have an acronym that helps us remember this, or we can make one up, I don't know. Then the medians intersect at the centroid. And then the in center um, equidistant from the sides. Is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So you could memorize those which some of you might want to, um, but I would, I would recommend doing it just drawing and seeing which one hits that point. So on the other side, if you were to draw these different segments, the ones that would intersect at this point would actually be the perpendicular bisector. So if I drew a perpendicular bisector of this line and then a perpendicular bisector of this line and then a perpendicular bisector of this line, it would intersect at that point. So the answer is perpendicular bisector. Okay. It's a little easier from here on out. Okay, so next one. This one is actually a really easy one as long as you know what they're looking for. It says a figure is shown, select the values to complete the trigonomic ratio and it says tan of theta. So theta, it shows it right here. That's our designated angle right here. Um, then you would also want to write down Sokotoa. Okay, so it's saying tan. So that would be opposite over adjacent. So this would be your opposite side. This is hypotenuse and then this is adjacent. So opposite over adjacent would be square root of 32 over two. And in these boxes, there's a drop down, so you'd just be choosing square to 32 over 2. That's supposed to be a 2, by the way. 
Maybe I should scribble it out and write it again. Two. Okay, so as long as you know what you're looking for there, they, as long as you know what they're looking for there, that one's pretty easy. Okay, next one. It says the vertices of one of the diagonals of a square is located at these two points. Enter values and select a phrase to describe the location of the other vertices of the square. The other vertices of the square are located at these points because those points make the diagonals blank. And there's a drop down. Okay, so I'm trying to find the other two points of the square. So what I'm going to do is actually sketch it out. So over in this blank space over here, I'm going to draw myself a little coordinate plane. You will have graph paper available to draw on for the ESC as well. So you would just draw a little coordinate plane. I'm gonna plot these points. It's like negative three, four. And then two, negative one. Okay. Jeffrey, turn off your music. I always hear it. Is that you? Who is it? Mason, is it your music? No. Oh, can you turn it off, please? Thank you. Okay. Um, so here's two points. Now we're going to sketch out a square and find out what the other two points are. So I'm going to sketch out a square right here. All right. You need to know what these coordinates are. Well, this one would be at two, four, and then these points would be at negative three, negative one. Okay, so these are my two answers that I'd put in these boxes. I have negative three, negative one, and two, four. Then it says those diagonals would be what? Well, if you sketch out a diagonal here and here, um, and again, you're using a drop down and you're just looking at the answer choices, the correct answer is congruent and perpendicular. And you can see that those diagonals would be the same length and they're also intersect at a 90 degree angle. All right, next one. It has to do with a transformation. Um, transformation of a circle. Okay, it says the center of circle G is at zero, zero, and then G prime is at one, one. So looking at this, you have G prime at zero, zero, and it's the larger circle, and then G prime is right here, it's the smaller one. So we have circle G, and then G prime. Remember G is the original, G prime is the second one, the new one, or the image, pre-image image. It says right here that the radius of G, and you could also count this from zero to five, is five. And the radius of G prime, you can count this too, one, two, three, is four units. I Okay, so then it wants us to, to look at this transformation here and decide what C and D are. Okay, so C and D, C right here, they're multiplying by the X and the Y, so that would be a dilation. Um, you can see it's going, getting smaller from one to the other. We need to know exactly what the dilation is or what the scale factor is. And for scale factor, scale factor, remember it is new over the original. So in this case, the dimensions of this one would be, the new one would be four and the old one would be five. So four fifths would be what you're multiplying the points by, four fifths. Or you could put 0.8, however your brain works. Both would be correct. And then for this one, it's showing a translation um, so remember here, it's like left or right. Whoa, I'm reading really small. Left or right, and then this is up and down. So for the x value, we're moving to the right one and then up one. So it's x plus one, 
y plus 1. So x plus 1, y plus 1. So therefore, d is just 1. OK, next, equation of a circle. Um, equation of a circle is not in this format. So equation of a circle, just to remind you, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the general, like the, I don't know, general or standard form of a circle. The common form of a circle is this one. Sometimes they give it, give you the equation in this format and you have to rearrange it to get into this format so you can pull out the center, which the center would be hk, and then of course the radius would be the square root of this. Um, so we are going to practice rearranging this. We did see this in a lesson a few weeks ago, but we are going to review it because it's a process. So moving on to the back again. We're gonna move over to the back. And then write this down. x squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 12y equals negative 27. Okay, so the steps that we learned were we have to group it, then complete the square, and then three, reformat it, Three, four, reformat it into the other format. Sorry, what is it? That says group, complete the square, and reformat. Okay, so what I mean by group is you have to put all the x's with the x's and the y's with the y's. It looks like they already kind of did that here. Sometimes they won't, um, but here's what it would look like. x squared plus 8x plus blank plus y squared minus 12y plus blank equals negative 27. Okay, we need to figure out what numbers go in these blanks. And the way you would do that, there's actually a formula. It is b over 2 squared. What is b? Well, this would be a, b, c. So b is 8. 8 over 2 squared, 4 squared is 16. Then we do the same thing for this one. It's going to be negative 12 over 2. Let's do it over in this space. Negative 12 over 2 squared. So that would be negative 6 squared is 36. So then we put the 36 here, and whatever you add to this side of the equation, you also have to add to this side, so that's why we're adding it over here too. Okay, next step is we break these into factors. So two numbers that multiply to this number and add to this would be x plus four, x plus four. So. 4 times 4 is 16, 4 plus 4 is 8. And then over here, two numbers that multiply to this, multiply to 36 and add to negative 12 would be negative 6 and negative 6 would add to negative 12 multiply to 36. So y minus 6, y minus 6 equals negative 27 plus 16 plus 36 comes out to 25. And now you start to see the format that we're supposed to have. So this would be x plus 4 squared plus y minus 6 squared equals 25. And then this would be h and k, the center. So the center is negative 4, positive 6. And the radius, you would take the square root of 25 equals 5. And then on the other side, you would plug that into the equation. Okay. 
So on this side, then our center was at negative four, six, radius of five. And I wish there was an easy way to do it, but there's just not. Okay, um, so that is it for the EOC practice today. So leave this out on your desk and I'll come around and give you credit for it. Um, for the rest of class, which you guys have a lot of time, um, work on your weekly Khan Academy. If you finish all 10, um, you can get your phone. If you have questions, please raise your hand, let me know.